My name is Alan McGinley. I'm an ecosystem architect here at Venify. And today I'm going to answer the question, what's the minimum you need to do to see Cert Manager working on an Amazon EKS cluster? Straight away, I'm going to point you towards this repo, ask you to clone it and follow the instructions in the setup as necessary. And then we're going to follow this demo and you can follow this along yourself or just watch me. Your goal here is to enforce secure TLS communication between any browser on the internet and a single containerized workload running in EKS. Managed Kubernetes services like EKS provide a quick and simple way to expose your workloads to the internet via load balancers. In this scenario, the browser will expect HTTPS, which implies TLS, but the workload itself only supports HTTP. We can implement a reverse proxy solution by positioning an Nginx instance between an internet facing load balancer and the HTTP workload. The Nginx instance can then be loaded with X.509 certificates, making it responsible for TLS termination. To clarify, this means traffic touching the internet is HTTPS, whilst traffic touching the workload is plain old HTTP. Ingress Nginx is a packaged version of Nginx for deployment inside Kubernetes clusters. Instead of having to edit Nginx configuration files by hand, Ingress Nginx supports declarative configuration via Kubernetes Ingress resources. Those resources can reference certificates stored as Kubernetes secrets, but on its own, Ingress Nginx is unable to create certificates or renew them before they expire. And that's where Cert Manager comes in. So we're going to start by just showing that we have connectivity and we have nothing untoward in our namespaces. Then we're going to create our demos workload and expose that via a cluster IP service. With that in place, we can move to installing our Ingress Nginx controller. This is done via Helm and will take a couple of minutes. Okay, when that's complete, we can go ahead and turn our attentions to Cert Manager, which is another Helm installation, which again takes a couple of minutes. This time it brings its own CRDs with it. That's complete. And now we can move on. Check the namespaces again. We have three new ones in there. Take a look at the Ingress Nginx service, which is a load balancer. And that's a real AWS load balancer. We can check that by asking AWS and it concurs. So we grab that DNS name and we start polling it to see how quickly it can come back. This time that was instantaneous. So we can see that our load balancer is forwarding traffic to Nginx. That 404 looks wrong. It's not, it's correct. There's no root there yet because we haven't created any ingress objects. Taking a look at Cert Manager, we see we have some workloads and some services. We also have four new API resources the important ones here are issuers and certificates, which you'll come across soon. Here's an issuer. This one allows Cert Manager to interact with Let's Encrypt. And we're going to install that now and check that it registered correctly. It did. So we can move on. Now we're going to turn our attentions to DNS. So here's a domain that I own, and we're going to set up a record. Uh, I'm going to do this manually through the AWS console. So I'm going to grab that subdomain and hop over here, create a record which I'll bind to our load balancer. OK, that's done.
and now we can just probe that new DNS name to see how quickly it resolves. It was immediate, so now when we curl it, we get the same result as if we'd curled the load balancer directly. So we have an alias to the load balancer. Again, no response other than 404 because we have no ingress objects. We'll fix that now. So just to recap, we have two components here, uh, the record name and the certificate. And you can see that they are derived from each other. Uh, the basic template for our ingress doesn't know what our DNS record name is, so we're going to uh, populate that uh, by substitution. So in the next page, you'll see how DNS record name and certificate get overwritten. Also note here that you've got two important annotations uh, which associate this ingress with both Nginx and Cert Manager. So there's the substitution, and with that in place, we can apply our ingress. Now that ingress is in place, we can take a look at it, and it confirms that it supports port 80 and 443. Let's check to see that that's happy. It will take a moment, maybe 30 seconds, before the certificate is issued. When the certificate is issued, Nginx will need to be reconfigured and restarted. That's the purpose of Ingress Nginx. With that in place, we can now hit that endpoint and you can see that works okay. I should be able to demonstrate this also from within a browser, so let's hit that in a browser. This tells me that the workload received HTTP, but the traffic went out on HTTPS. I've got a, a certificate here, and if I take a look at the certificate, you can see it's Let's Encrypt. So let's take a look at what actually happened. There was obviously a certificate created, and it looks like this. And if I take a look at that secret, I can see that it's made up of two files, a certificate and a private key. If I want a more typical view of the certificate, I can run it through OpenSSL to see that it is in fact Let's Encrypt with those validity periods that we saw there. So now you know about Cert Manager. What next? Venify Jetstack Secure includes an enterprise hardened version of Cert Manager along with a number of machine identity management capabilities needed to support Kubernetes machine identities on an enterprise basis. So look out for more demos in the future revealing what's possible with Jetstack Secure. Thanks very much.